be a lot of notes. Okay. 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 So this is where they house all the mm. they house all the slaves in this building. Yeah, all the slaves. So where would you get it? Where would you get it? Where would you get it? Where Every single house. Right. You can see on the side of the ocean, the yeah. slave yeah. house. So it's at the ocean. Right. Right. It's 28 right. all together. That's all I can do. towards the, uh, the black race. But the history behind this white house gives one heart breaking insight to the lives of millions of African men, women, and children whose lives were traumatized. This what we install. It also tells the atrocities that our forefathers went through for over 350 50 years. If you take a look at the configuration, if you take a look at the uh, configuration of the house and the architecture, yeah. it requires a very little effort of the imagination to realize how hellish the living conditions were for those Africans. This presence of the house was built in 1784, around 1784. So this is the only remaining slab house on Gore Island, as earlier ones, which dated back to the Portuguese occupation of the 15th century, have been lost in time. Yeah. They all have vanished. And the total number of slaves in this house was estimated as somewhere between 150 to 200 slaves, men, women, and children. So this house, they had, they had to work for three long months before they shipped away. Yeah. And as a means of transportation, they dealt with slave ships. That was the only type of transportation available at the time. Yeah. And for their final destination to the Americas, it was up to the slave body and the slave parents. You know, oftentimes, whole families were brought here. But the destination of the members was seldom the same. For example, the father could be sent to Louisiana in the United States. Yeah. The mother could be sent to Brazil or Cuba. And the child could be sent to Haiti or the West Indies. Separation was, hey, was irrevocable. Separation was irresistible. Okay? So they left Gore not, not with the original African name, but they left Gore with registered or registration numbers. Yeah. And once on the plantations, they would carry their own last name. For example, African Americans with English names, Brazil with Portuguese names, Cuba with Spanish names, Haiti or the West Indies with French names. As you can see, these were adoptive names, not the original African African names. And they got this from how? How did they get the names again? Also, from uh, it depends on the owner's okay. last name. What they, well, they got there, yeah. That's why African Americans with, with English names. Yeah, like something. This type of cells you can see here, along with those facing them, these were particularly designed for men. It's a 2.6 meters long, 2.6 meters wide, 15 to 20 men inside, as you can see. There was no window. Those windows had been opened shortly after it was renovated by UNESCO. Oh, wow. It's a 2.6 meters long, 2.6 meters wide, 20, can you imagine 20 men inside. In order to compensate for the lack of space, they were made to sit up with their backs and leaning against the walls with chain and shackles around their neck. In the middle of the chain, a heavy metal ball that the slaves used to carry before they were allowed to go to the It was a 10 pound, 5 kilograms between their legs in the middle of a chain. 
Okay. To keep them from running away. They will shut them two by two. The right wrist at the right angle of one leg, to the left wrist at the left angle of another. The they struggle to breathe. They struggle to find comfort. And they all believe that death will only reunite with their family. They believe death was the only liberation they could get from this ordeal. The value of a man was fixed according to his muscle structure and according to his weight. And the minimum weight required for men was 120 pounds. And they were released once a day to use the toilet. And those who felt like using the toilet before the due time, they have to do it on the spot. As a result of that, their living condition was so appalling, it was so unsanitary. But the first plague epidemic, which killed half of the island's population, came from this sanctuary in 1779. So we can go to the children's cell on the other side. Let me ask you, so when you see, I know you mentioned about, you know, not letting, you know, long as you're helping her brother out, to let it, you know, us get on a boat and the divisiveness between blacks, whether it's because of religion or like in my country, blacks divide each other based off of their skin tone or like they try to pretend like because they can, they make a lot of money that they, they're better. But like what happened to Bill Cosby or what happened to a lot of the other famous celebrities, it happens to them because in the system, it doesn't matter how rich you are, you still the N word. Like, like, what do you think about that when you see that we, we still divide ourselves when it's obvious that we should stick together? But these are the consequences huh? of slavery and deception. So it messes mess with the mind. The mentality. It has an impact on the mentality. Right. It has an impact right. on their economy. They rescued their own economy. Right. And they made a whole lot of money. It was all about business. But it has some mental consequences among the African Americans and people of African African descent. Yeah, like, like, yeah. Yeah, this cell was particularly designed for children. Okay. When we talk about children, we talk about age range from 6 to 12. Yeah. It looks like, it looks like a narrow gallery, which is this uh, far end. You know what? The death rate was obviously the highest in the cell because they were in the tent. You remember? Husband separate from wives, children separate from their mothers, separate from their parents. And the death rate was obviously the highest in the children's cell. It's very hard to get a handle on the numbers as to how many children were kept here. But it has been estimated that they were jam packed like fish in a sardine cane. You know, and they were crying all day long. And their mother could barely hear them cry. And she can say, you know, the value of a child was fixed according to his set of teeth. Do you know why? No. Because there was no birth certificate for the children to determine the age. They right. opened the mouth like an animal mm -hmm. to determine, to have uh, not an exact idea, an estimate of how old the child, the child works. Wow. So that's why the value of a child was fixed according to his of okay. What's most creepy about this, right, is the fact that the people, the Moorish people, right? They were, it was people called the Moorish people. They were in the Iberian Peninsula, now called Spain. Yeah, I mean, the, the, most, the most selective race at the time was Yoruba. When we talk about the Yoruba, we talk about people from, uh, from West Nigeria and East Benin. But remember, those windows had been opened shortly after it was renovated by UNESCO. Right. It used to be a very dark room. And only a heavy iron bar door only allowed them to get some air from, allowed them to breathe. Mm -hmm. Now you can imagine, they could even tell what time of day it was. Well, the thing I'm saying is that prior to slave trade about 500 years ago, 800, 900 years ago, you know, black people that were ruling over in Spain. And so, like, these people, they saw black people weren't were clearly more than, than were human. But then, four or five hundred years later, they came over here and treated them less than you. All right. Well, the Indian people, the Indian people, it didn't work. Uh, it, it, it with the Indian people, you know, it, it didn't work. And they tried to the African people, they were strong. That's when they started. But basically, when we talk about uh, slavery, right. it does apply outside of government and outside of Africa. We didn't really experience, to be honest, mm. this, uh, uh, slavery. But we in Africa, we can, we can, we are allowed to only talk about the slave trade. Okay. This is where they were traded. Right. Right here. But slavery was on the plantations. Right. Yeah, we don't have any plantations over here. So. Okay. So you Well, let's play Kevin. How are you? I'm great. Hey, how's it going? Nice to meet you.
This cell was particularly designed for young girls. When I say young girls, they were separated from, from women, okay? Yeah. Young girls, there was the only one in this house, they had their own bathroom right here. You see the toilet. Mm. You see? Young girls, they were held separately from the rest because they were being paraded on a regular basis to the middle of the slave house so the slave traders could choose them for sex. Right. If they became pregnant, then they were allowed to remain on the island freely until they, they gave birth. Those mixed race children had enviable social position in the colony. Those mulattoes, that's how they call them, from a white father and a black mother, they quickly formed a privileged community on this island. And they were different from other Africans. Do you know why? Yeah. Because of the integrating. Right. See? Yeah. You know, slave traders, administration officials, the military who were sent from France to Senegal, they did not bring their wives with them. Do you know why? For fear of many health risks. They chose young girls to take each night for their sexual pleasure. Okay? If they became pregnant, then they were allowed to remain on the island freely until they gave birth. Right. Okay? In 1815, during the Vienna Conference, mm. when Gore was given back to France, those mulattoes from a white father and a black mother, they were granted full French citizenship. As you can see, it was in the best interest for these young girls to have sexual intercourse with the slave traders in order to be, to be free. It was the only way of, of salvation. And the value of a young girl was fixed according to the fullness of her breasts, which at the time was a clear indication of virginity. You know, once a girl was flat chested, she was not considered as a young girl, therefore she was taken to a woman's session. And the young girls were four times more expensive than the woman. Okay. So that explains the division between the people because of stuff like that. Say again? Which you were explaining about how it was in the best interest to procreate with the people exactly. that were them. That, that correlates to the, this, the fragmentation between African Americans exactly. and Exactly, that's why you can't Because they me. constantly think about trying to get you know, over, all the way to the United States. States. If you're like skinny, then you're on the top. If you're dark skinny, yeah. that's exactly that's the mentality that has been. Because the, in my country, right, you'll have a man that's like yeah. you, yeah. if you were me, or even Barack Obama, he's way more successful, or he's more licensed, but you yourself, you, you would be well off in society and you will be more accepted by the white people but you'll have a light-skinned person who try to particularly a woman she'll try to position better than you but you're higher up in the society than she is and like she doesn't get it because like she just mentally exactly. up. Oh, oh my God. it's a mental slavery right <laughs> yeah it, it is uh, escalated to uh, trying to uh, ski and oh, oh, how much did I say was uh, the minimum requirement weight for me. Say 126? 120 pounds. Less than 120 pounds. That's not okay. Less than 120 pounds, they were considered as underweight slaves. And therefore, they were confined here in this cell. And they were fed up like kids within three months. You know, they were fed up with black eyed beans or locally grown beans. And they made a very structure in order to speed up the process. And within three months, we should be able to reach the 120 pounds to be eligible for auction. So they call it the uh, feedlot, this one they were fed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is a solitary confinement cell. Solitary, it was designed for only one person. It was used as a punishment cell yeah. for the recalcitrant slaves, for those who were trying to fight back. You can come, get, get closer. It was designed for only one. But since there were so many people who were trying to fight back, yeah. so many people who didn't want to cooperate, yeah. they did not care how many they put in there. It was designed for one, but they could put up to eight, ten people in there. And once they put in this cell, there's no way you can stand straight. So right. we have the opportunity to go inside. Messed up. And, messed up. and they stay here, depending depending on how serious the crime they commit. We had a privilege to receive late Nelson Mandela in an official visit in 1991, one year after he was released from jail. He broke away from his tour, he sits silently in this hall, and he emerged red-eyed and plainly shaken. 
You know why? Because it was reminiscent of the 27 years that he's been in South African prison. Okay. So when they get done, you can just throw inside and uh, do some more. Uh, we can uh, proceed. This is the best way. Okay, you can just go inside and come back. So we to take a look. Yeah, sure.